So inside this box right here is a 1978 brand new Harley Davidson. Never been ridden, never been nothing, and I cannot wait. Now, now in reality, it's actually kind of a um, controversial bike. So stay with me, stay with me, but I cannot wait. Let's just get the box off. We gotta get this, we gotta get this box off. Harley Sportster 1000. Check it out. So these straps have been holding down this motorcycle for the past 45 years. This is actually the uh, the Harley Davidson straps that we modeled our tank straps off of. Ours are just twice as big, so they would last 80 years. So this is the original crate. It was never taken off the crate. So they, I guess they put a, they put a flat piece of tin and they, they crushed it down with, with the wheel. And then you have this piece of wood right here in the middle. What a cool bike. Their 75th anniversary. I, I don't really know that much about these motorcycles. I do know that this was, was the last year that you could get Kickstart. This one does not have Kickstart, but if it did, it would be right here. And I'm kind of bummed out. I really wish it had Kickstart. First, just looking at it at first glance, what jumps out at me? Why does this have AT tires? Eagle ATs. ATs, maybe I'm dumb. Uh, I thought AT stood for all-terrain. They, they look kind of all-terrain. Tires actually feel pretty good. I would, I would feel more comfortable riding these 45-year-old tires than some of the junk that I've ridden home in the past couple uh, couple videos. And now I'm sure you remember that in the past couple, couple years, we've unboxed a lot of motorcycles. We unboxed the Honda Ascot, we unboxed the, uh, the Yamaha, we unboxed the Norton. Almost the oldest one we've ever done, but this is the first time we ever did a Harley. Well, no, we did a Harley Davidson, we did the MT500 Harley Davidson. This is the best way to preserve that motorcycle, is for us to pull this thing out and get this thing running, which is exactly what we're gonna do. For you to really understand why this bike is kind of controversial, I gotta take you back about half a century. The year is 1969, and at some point during that time, Neil walked on the moon, the Ford GT smoked Ferrari and won Le Mans, and the average cost of a home was $25,000. A Big Mac was just 49 cents, and men dressed like this. They looked so stupid. And Harley Davidson was in so much financial trouble that they had to sell to AMF, yes, the bowling company. These guys were now making America's beloved motorcycle. Now some people claim that the AMF era was what caused the Harley Davidson to have a reputation for their motorcycles to leak oil. That's not, it's not completely not true. However, they've been leaking oil for a lot longer than the AMF days. They kept the brand alive and launched some really iconic vehicles that we still know and love today. Like the Harley Snowmobile and the Harley Davidson Golf Cart. Yeah. I know. They did, however, come out with the Lowrider and the Super Glide, which were and are still great bikes. So there's a lot of strange feelings, mostly negative, against the AMF Harley Davidson days. But it has to be said that one, AMF saved the Harley Davidson brand. Fact. Two, a lot of the styling that came out during that era paved the way and is still being used in a lot of the Harley Davidsons to this day. And in 1982, a group of investors, including Willie G. Davidson, was able to buy back the company, back from AMF, turned it into what we know Harley Davidson is now. Okay, so next observation. One, good news, this is a cable clutch, not a hydraulic clutch. We don't got it. That feels like it works. Observation number two, this is the brake, and this is just loose, completely floppy. I'm hoping, I've, I've never unboxed anything, I've never, I've never ridden a Harley from this era. I'm hoping that maybe they ship these things, they, they ship these motorcycles out with no brake fluid. Because brake fluid does not last 45 years just sitting there doing nothing. It turns into dust, ask me how I know. This, if, if I would have, if I would have saw a motorcycle with this, I would have assumed that someone put that on there aftermarket. Hold on, hold on, check this out. Look at that bolt is the best bolt to put on this thing, right? It's, it's ha half of it's hanging off. Maybe this is some of that quality control stuff that they were talking about with the AMF bikes. Oh, does it have oil in it? Let's check it out. All right. Maybe a little bit. 
It smells like an old shoe store. Like imagine walking into your grandfather's shed or like a, a mechanic shop from the 40s. What is that smell? I've smelled it before. So at, at this time in motorcycling, they didn't know to put slots or holes to improve uh, the braking and to stop the heat. And now all the bikes, all the bikes look like this. This is 2019, this is 1999, this is 2005, this is, well, I don't know if you guys have seen this bike yet, but uh. Now, now check this out. This is actually pretty cool. This is not only the drum brake, but it's also the, the rear sprocket. Now I've seen them do it with discs too, but it was, I thought it was more on the custom side. That makes sense. Why, why have a drum on or a, a drum on the other side and a, a sprocket on the other side, other than the fact that a sprocket is a wear item and needs to be replaced. Although it's a pretty big, pretty big fat one. But it is, it is interesting. But it does look like the hardware in this thing they just grabbed from the hardware store. Like, like, look at that. You could replace that bolt anywhere at Home Depot and get the exact same thing. So in order for us to get this thing running, we need to make sure it's got fuel, we need to make sure it's got spark, we need to make sure it's got oil. Oil is that thing that like I would forget about. I assume it's got compression, I don't know why it wouldn't. It's a brand new bike. There's also another box of stuff with this bike and I'm hoping that has keys, the gauges. I don't even know where the gauges go. I learn about motorcycles by buying them and riding them in Onium. So there's someone out there who's like, this guy's a moron, he doesn't. How many people do you know who oh, still own a 1978 Harley Sportster? Probably not that many. And they're probably not my age. So just cut me some slack. Also, I know someone's out there about to comment and they're saying, hey, you got a haircut. Well, actually I didn't get a haircut through a series of strange sleeping events. I just woke up looking like a YouTube lawyer. But by the next time you see me, I will once again be the physical embodiment of a scruffy nerf herder. <laughs> so what's inside the gas tank could go a couple different ways. Obviously it should be empty. It should be completely empty. And if it's not empty, we have a huge problem because gas is not, well, get, no, that's actually not true. Gas does hold up. Old gas holds up really well, I think. Because the old gas without ethanol holds up pretty good. Let's pop that open. Let's see what's inside there. The greatest thing. Yeah. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite look like the bottom of the Titanic, the wreckage of the Titanic. It doesn't look great. It's barely on there. I mean, it's bolted on, but that, that, there's, no way, there's no way you should be riding on it. It's moving like a half an inch. So that uh, concerns me. Not only did I buy the bike sight unseen, but I didn't actually physically put my eyes on it. Not the best move. I was also pretty excited about buying it that I didn't actually read the entire description. And apparently, and this might have something to do with why the bike is still in the crate. So this is not the original tank. In 1978, which was the year this was born, the original tank got dented and then they put this tank on there. Because this is attached to this. It shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. Now, if I were to guess, I would assume that there'd be some type of rubber bushing that would go under the tank. So when this thing sits down on it, it's nice and soft and you know, that, that's how most bikes do it. Maybe that's in the of stuff. Maybe it's in the box. I don't know. Good news. I don't see any sign of life on this bike. I don't see any rodents. I don't see any bugs. That may have been because the box had has been off it for so long. It's not going anywhere the way it sits because it, it, it weighs like 500, maybe 600 pounds. I gotta get this thing off of there without dropping it. And I know just the tool to help me out. I call it East Coast Banana. The goal is pretty clear. Don't drop the bike. Don't drop the bike. Oh, fix this for us. Don't drop the bike. Don't drop the bike. We didn't drop the bike. All right, closed it. All right, so the, there, there's two things. One, the goal is to ride this bike today. 
That is the goal. When I say today, I mean this video. At the end of the video, we're having a huge announcement and it's a big deal. And it's something we've been working on for about two or three years and uh, you're gonna wanna see it. Don't forget to so stay for that part. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let me get this thing off the pallet for the first time in 45 years. Pump some air in the tire. So my big goal here, don't drop the bike. Now that, I gotta cut that. Okay, well this is kind of embarrassing. Um, you know how many times I've opened motorcycles with chainsaws and the stupidest stuff? I don't have dikes to cut, that, to cut that bolt. I actually, when I moved to Tennessee, someone made me an offer on my whole toolbox and all my tools in it and I sold them, uh, with the exception of a few things. So, let me go grab the right tool. Those two straps are the only thing holding it on there. My concern is that this is gonna be much heavier than what I think it is. 550 pounds, 600 pounds. I really don't wanna drop it. So I'm trying to come up with a strategy of how I can get it off that thing. Well, let's just see how it goes. Maybe I can pick, maybe I can pick it back up and I don't know. So I cut the straps off and I know what you're thinking. Sean, you wasted some good straps. Well, they weren't that good. They were pretty old, they were pretty rough looking. And I got plenty of tank straps back at the shop. Then I was ready to try and move the bike off the pallet, hopefully without dropping it. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> we are kind of off. Come on, there we go. First time this has been off the crate in 45 years. Now until we pump the tires up, it's gonna lean a little. I got the bike safely off the pallet, but there's still a lot of unknowns, and I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of things can go wrong with a motorcycle when it just sits, especially since it was never designed to sit for half a century. So hopefully, we'll get this thing running. And it looks like we have a, a potential problem. And when I say potential, I mean, it's a pretty awful looking crag. So what happened was, wherever the bike, where the, where the flat part was on the bottom, was all squished up, that's what, and that is a nasty looking crack. Let's see what the back tire looks like. You got some pretty big tread separation right there. That's pretty bad. When the tread is separating from the sidewall, you know you're about to have a real good time. So interesting thing, and I think this was more popular back in the day, but every valve stem is a little uh, valve stem tool. So we want to talk about uh, AMFs, attention to detail, <laughs> check this out. Notice the seam on the back of that seat. This is straight. This is the, first of all, it's all kind of like going in a goofy way, but that is an inch over, look at that. <laughs> and that should be right, right here, pillowy over here and face, it. it's not, it's not even close to being symmetric. All right, well, let's go see what's inside the box. We'll do it right over here. All right, so here is, <laughs> the box. And there's definitely some things that we, I'm looking out for. One, the keys. If we don't get the keys, we're in, we're in into trouble. Title, mirror, limited warning. Let's see if this, those, those tires are still under warranty. I've seen this book before. Instruction, the owner's manual. Yes. Woohoo! Check it out, check it out. The gauges. To protect your warranty, first 50 miles, stay below 45, 50 to 500 miles, stay below 60 miles an hour, and avoid fast starts, over speeding engine. All right. Here's the turn signals. Bag of bolts and pegs. Now, I'll be honest with you, okay, let's look at this. Nothing about this piece tell, looks like a, a brand new piece. Does that look brand new to you? Nothing about that looks brand new to me. It's got dirt in it. Same thing with this. Nothing about that looks brand new to me. Maybe it is, I don't know. This doesn't look it. Um, cables, oh, this is a speedometer cable. Is this two speedometer cables? Brake lever, love it. Where is the shift lever? The shift lever. And then some hardware, okay. Hopefully, yes. The keys. AMF Harley Davidson. There we go. If you were wondering, the battery is dead. I had my hopes up. Writing tips. 
for the motorcyclist. Mid 19th century, I don't care. Mommy rider and child rider. My man's got no neck. <laughs> so I grabbed the few tools that I did have and I started wrenching. So this is, you don't put it like this way because then it folds down. You don't want it to fold down, you want it to fold up. A little Teflon lock washer makes sense because you don't want that to fall off. Double lock washer. How do these gauges actually mount? It looks like they mount, see those long bolts from the, uh, right there. Looks like they mount off on there. So I gotta pull those, pull the handlebar clamps off. But why do I have, why do I have two of these? Is this a temporary one? And this is the one that you're actually supposed to use? It would make sense, kind of. So I made the grave mistake of leaving a piece of mail at the house or something. I'm, I'm not really completely sure how she found me. Maybe she followed me, but my wife found the location of my new shop. And occasionally now she will drop off one of my children. And I'm lucky enough to have my daughter here to help me out with the rest of the build. It could be a house. Let's back it up over here. Let's see if we can get a light. There you go. You turn the light on. Jacket. All right, so here I'm thinking I'm having a little bit of a problem. So normally this is where I would step away and be like, all right, Craig, I got some other uh, important thing to do. You, uh, you, you jump in and take this <laughs> and you figure this out. That's not good. That Craig's not here. Craig's not here. I gotta figure it out, I'm gonna read the manual. Don't, don't tell anyone I read the manual though. If you, if you tell anyone, I'm gonna be so mad. Found it. And after reading the 500 page manual, I knew everything there was to know about this bike, except where those things plug in, because I, I can't find this setup. There should be setup instructions, I can't find them. Harley Sportster setup instructions. Man, I can't find it anywhere. Well, I'm not gonna say I'm giving up, but I am gonna move on. So I'm really not pleased with how these handlebars are coming together. It's a very weird feeling, because you're like, you're like this. Now, I understand like the buckhorn, but this is a little funny. This is as much as I wanna do, we'll, get, we'll have somebody who knows what they're doing do a better job than that. So the way I learn is one of two ways. One, screwing stuff up. Two, breaking stuff. I, this is a cool bike, I really like this bike. I don't wanna mess this thing up. I need to find someone who knows so I loaded up the bike and head over to my buddy and just Dave's over place Harley's over at Krusty and I know Cycles. Just a guy. Hey, what are you doing, Sean? Dave. Good to see you again. What we got going What's on up, here? Man? Brand new 1978 Harley Davidson Sportster 1000. That's a beautiful 75th anniversary, man. That is gorgeous. You just unboxed it? Just, I pulled off the crate. That's Tires gorgeous. are pretty smoked. What's with that tank? Tank we'll have to reline. That's not too bad though. But you see, you see how it's like all wobbling up here? Yeah, it's, it, you probably got some loose ends. They probably didn't snug everything up real well when they, uh, from the factory, just, just so that you, people could PDI things. How awful is that? <laughs> it looked pretty bad inside. It's pretty, it's pretty rusted, but it's, a lot of that's just surface rust, man. Uh, we can get a lot of that stuff off with some, some cream. Yeah, so I, I, so I didn't, I, I put these in there. I didn't put these ones, because I'm like, ah, it didn't look right. I got the box of other stuff. What else would I had, I had concerns about? No brake pressure. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is empty. I'm hoping it's empty. Let's, let's crack that open and just give it a whirl and see what it looks like inside there. Because, you know, last time I did this, it was powder. That Brake dust doesn't last more than 40 years in my experience. Yeah, the brake fluid's got a shelf life. All right, here's the big moment. 
Here, hold on, before we take that off. Just a little protection, man, cause she is, she's never been run and this oh, tank yeah, is yeah, immaculate. Yeah. Taft, would you mind grabbing me a fender cover and putting one on there for me? I got it. Great news. Oh, it's bone dry. That's bone dry. And this is just the gasket, I, I yeah. guess. Oh, look at that. Yep, that was probably the, the original sealant that they put on that. Oh, they, they put on the whole thing and then mm -hmm. they... Rear brakes are working. Yep, they work. So let me show you the box of stuff that came with it. It actually came okay. with a different one, a different... A uh, uh, different top clamp? Yeah, top, yeah, they came with a different one. And they had different bolts in there too. Your tack wire would go somewhere on the transmission. That's, that's what I thought, couldn't, unless it goes, there. is it here? Yep. It's gonna go right there. It go right here. It's gonna run off your cam compartment, uh, which is gonna give you your cam speed, which will give you your engine speed, right. ultimately. Should I screw it in? Yeah, why not? It's better than getting screwed, right? <laughs> what we're gonna do, Sean, oh, is get some going. standoffs and, and put it up like that, okay. uh, instead of clamping it down, because the one thing that I didn't like about this, if you put it in the clamp like that, you're not you're not doing a true load on, on the, the bar, so you're not truly securing them. Whereas if we, if we bolt it up here, all that clamping pressure is gonna be even on the bars, uh, which is what I, I, this bike was made in 1978, I was born in 1981, so, uh, Okay. <laughs> the bike's older than me. I'm just, yeah. I'm just through reverse engineering. I'm, I'm guessing that if I would have built this and designed this, I would have had this bracket up like this with some spacers underneath here yeah, where right. this is offset. Maybe I have those. I mean, I'll show you what I got. They may be in that. That's so pretty. Look at that. I think, I, th I think we need a new air filter. Oh yeah. <laughs> you even think about it in it. That's a big battery they got in there. Thing's ginormous. So here's the plan, forget that other stuff, forget that fancy stuff, uh, gauges, whatever. We're gonna pull the battery out. Dave's got a fresh battery charging up for us, and then we're gonna throw some fuel in it, and he's pretty confident it's gonna run. You know, if it, if it doesn't work, we track it down and see what the problem is. Square one. What do you think, you think it's got acid in it? Typically, they didn't ship these with acid in them, and it looks like every one of your cells is dry. And you know what? Working on this bike reminds me of one of my favorite verses. First Thessalonians 5.16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know, it's crazy. What always trips me out about old lead acid batteries is just the, the, the sheer heat they produce Dang. when they're charging. That just started too. Yeah, and you don't want to smoke a cigarette near that thing. So while we're trying to see if that one, that battery can come back, Dave's got a freshie, a freshie for us, and hopefully this will. I don't uh, think it's not going to be the right size, but we'll get it going. We're going to find out right now whether this thing cranks over or not. I can't wait. What do you think? You think it's going to fire up? I think it will. Because you got big faith in AMF Harley Davidson for quality. <laughs> So to test to see if the electrical system on the bike is working without just putting a whole battery inside there, we hooked up some test leads to the bike to test it. Yeah, I guess this isn't that much bigger than that. Well, hey, hey, we got power. This thing is good news. Well, one of the biggest concerns when these are in boxes is always rodents and stuff eating stuff. So when I got it, I just turned the key on like a boss. So we kind of have the bike on a lifeline, the, bat the batteries, it's hearts hanging out there. The, none of it's in the system. Well, we'll see if it fires up. And it's also easier to monitor stuff too. I got something more to show you guys. Now this is something that I've been working on for a while. Now I can't, I can't wait to hear what that bike sounds like. He's, he's working on it, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get there. But maybe two and a half years ago, I launched this special edition glove right here. These are the Sedona 508s and they're amazing gloves. We only sold a hundred of these and we sold them in seven minutes. People have been asking me for a while, and I've been dying to do this for a long time. For Black Friday, right now, we are launching 300 of the 508 Oxbloods. And these are all, these are these gloves, they look amazing, they feel great. So after the video's over, once we see if we get this thing fired up or not, go to the Bikes and Beards Gear website. We're only selling 300 of them. Well, that's the launch. Maybe we'll bring it back later, but one of the 300 people that buy this, is gonna get my, um, I'm gonna box up my BW80 and I'm gonna ship it to someone who orders those gloves. Oh, you get an awesome glove, an amazing glove, lined with Kevlar, you have a one in 300 chance, maybe one in 299 chance of getting that BW. We also have a bunch of killer deals on Black Friday, best deal we've ever had on the M1 Moto Spray, a lot of good stuff. Go check it out when the video is over. Those gloves, are, they're not gonna last long. Look, look, at, look at this. This thing was just hand tight right there. 
How's that one? Ah, oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's the same thing, just hand it's tight. It's supposed to be that way. That's your manual compression releases. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now we have the plugs actually snugged on there because they were just hand tight. Hopefully she'll fire now. Are we, are we ready? Are we, is this, I is believe this the, so. Is this the moment? All right. That sounds amazing. It's idling? Yeah. With the choke off? Choke off. Holy cow. When you don't have like old gas to contaminate that carburetor and there's nothing been through there, it's just like if you pulled it out of the box 45 years ago. You and I were discussing the oil should probably be changed because it is 45 years old. Right, right. Uh, and it, we do need to do a little bit of tinkering on it with relining the tank and bleeding the brakes. But other than that, man, this thing's roadworthy. Well, let's hear that one more time. That sounds good. And th that's the lightest throttle I've ever felt in my life. Let me get that. Let me get that camera real quick. Aha! Oh. Did, did honking it? Did honking it kill it? <laughs> Look, brake light works. Oh, everything works. Probably need a new turn signal relay, but that's it. Not, Not bad for a 45-year-old bike that's never been fired up. Not bad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna leave this thing with Dave. He's gonna get it all buttoned up so we can go ride it. Go check out the Bikes and Beards gear. We're only doing 300 of those gloves to launch it, and um, maybe we'll bring it back later because I really like the color. But uh, we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, you wanna race this thing? <laughs> yeah, let's race it. <laughs>